I am captivated by materials, which you may think is odd. It's a rather pedestrian concern. And the reason for that is, as a maker species, the resources that we have available are the materials that we have at hand. They define what we can create. As individuals, they create the space around which our day-to-day -day lives are lived, what materials we have and what we can work with. The absence of materials creates the inspiration for us to find those new things. Right? And in fact, as humanity, we've often defined where we are in our advancement and our growth by the materials we have at hand. So the Stone Age, this is the state of the art. Right? Simple materials that any individual can learn to master in their lifetimes. Advancement comes slowly. Materials are pretty limited. Right? It takes thousands of years to make some progress, and that progress is made by small groups of people. Right? As we step forward, humanity becomes more and more advanced. We have an agricultural revolution. We start to work with metals and metallurgy. We have a broader set of materials that we can work with. And we're working in larger and larger groups of people and individuals starting to specialize in the materials that they know how to handle, what they can do with them, right? To where we are today, the digital revolution. If we take a look at this, in the last 100 years, we've seen more advancement in the day-to-day -day lives and the materials that we use than we've seen in the thousands of years before that. And those materials and that existence that we now live is brought to us not by small groups of people or even tens, groups of tens of people, but hundreds of people in the largest organizations. And those organizations take the form of corporations. So the biggest innovations that we've seen in the last hundred years have come from chemical companies, from oil companies, from the original silicon in Silicon Valley. They brought us advanced materials, synthetic materials, right? Whereas a hundred years ago, we clothed ourselves and housed ourselves and protected ourselves with metal, with wood, with cotton, right? Not with Kevlar, not with PVC, okay? Those are all recent advancements. But one of the questions that we ask is, if this is true, that it's taking more and more people working together in a more specialized fashion in larger and larger groups to advance us, what does that mean in the revolution led by startups? We have small groups of people like this. What we've seen in the last year and in the last decade is that small groups of people working together as teams of three or four or five people who are coding somewhere in a basement or generating ideas somewhere on a whiteboard can change the way that we live our everyday lives and the materials that we're doing that with. Right? So the question becomes, if materials were the first things that we innovated in a lot of ways, can they still be things that we innovate in a small way? The question has often been answered with, it's really tough because you need one of these. You need a lab, right? Millions of dollars to build, millions of dollars to operate, and years, if not decades, to see through technology advancement and new materials be de-risked, right? And that's the province of large, large companies who have that, those resources and that timeline. Well, that's a heavy lift. How can, how can we address that? How is a large startup of, uh, sorry, a small startup of four people going to address a challenge that's typically been answered by large companies? Can we look somewhere else in the scientific realm to see if someone's done this? And the answer is yes. Pharmaceuticals and healthcare. If you rewind 30 years, most drugs that reached the market were born at large pharmaceutical companies. They followed years of research and development 
at these same large companies, went through the regulatory process, and were ultimately brought to market in that way. That's where our traditional big blockbusters have come from. But then those pipelines ran dry. And so large pharmacos had to start looking for a new way to innovate and a new set of fundamentals on which to work. And where did they look? Biotech. So the pharma biotech model, which has evolved over those 30 years, has addressed that main challenge where the biotechs took the mode of a small group of people working independently, willing to ask the question, why not, rather than why, and unhindered by a traditional bureaucracy or a conservative corporate culture, they could make advances on the technology front. And they could then be combined with the power of scale that came from the large pharmacos, right? where the skill wasn't necessarily in taking something from birth through its life cycle, but in being able to partner with another organization and be able to think in a different way. And eventually, to get that market fully functioning, venture capital is now heavily involved in a place that has a very, very long timeline, right? which is not a traditionally easy lift for venture. So back to materials. Fundamentally, it's chemistry in many cases, very similar to healthcare. So is there an opportunity here for materials to start advancing in the way other things have and finally join the disruptive economy and the startup world? So the question is, what will it take to do that? And it will take three things, the same thing that we learned from the biotech and pharma model, right? It will take small companies willing to do it in an environment that supports them. It will take large companies operating differently, right? Now they're merging, trying to find a new model. And the new model may be to abandon the not invented here mentality and adapt to a how do we partner mentality, right? And then the third piece is venture capital finding a space in the de-risking moment between small companies and large companies, right? And it could be transformative. If you take a look at pharma and biotech, there are thousands of partnerships that are created every year. And large pharmaceutical companies do tens of licensing deals every year, each one. Not one, not two, tens. And so the potential to transform the way that we live and the materials that we have as human beings can be dramatically shaped by this. We may have seen the pinnacle of new materials coming out of large companies, but we are just getting started on new materials coming out of small companies and in partnership with others. Thank you. <laughs>